Chapter 31, Civil Rights, Vietnam, and the Ordeal of Liberalism. Expanding the Liberal State. In the election of 1960, we have Republican Richard Nixon versus Democrat John F. Kennedy. With JFK's political positions and his public in image, he wins a narrow victory. He promised reforms in his New Frontier Plan. However, opposition by Congress frustrates his hopes. However, he does get tariff reductions, etc. His personality is a central part of his presidency. However, he is assassinated in 1963, and there's a dispute over whether or not it's a single murder or it's a larger conspiracy. So, Vice President Lyndon Johnson becomes president, and his reform pro program is known as the Great Society. He was an effective majority leader and won re-election. So, he established med establishes Medicare, which is federal aid to the elderly for health care. It's available to all elderly, not based on need, and the government pays rather than the patient. There is no change in the doctor. With Medicaid, we have medical assistance to people on welfare as well. And we have the War on Poverty with the Office of Economic Opportunity. However, it's controversial because of its community action. Community action is when poor communities make programs for themselves. However, it's impossible to sustain because their efforts are not enough and there is dwindling funding. There's a new cabinet agency known as Housing and Urban Development. So we have the Model Cities Program, which, is, which gives federal, federal subsidies for urban redevelopment. We have federal aid to public education with the Elementary School and Secondary Education Act of 1965. Also in 1965, we have the Immigration Act, which places a limit on immigrants. However, those from Europe, Asia, and Africa are can immigrate on an equal basis. The federal budget outpaces revenues, and because of the failures of many great society programs, we have debt, of course. So there's disillusionment in federal efforts to solve social problems as well, um, such as reducing... However, it did reduce hunger and made medical care available, and there's a huge reduction in policy in, in poverty, although it does not um, eliminate it entirely. The Battle for Racial Equality JFK enforces existing race laws and supports desegregation efforts. However, he made modest progress without, crea without creating political division. The Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, also known as the NCC, and the Congress of Racial Equality, or CORE, work together on freedom rides, which are essentially um, blacks ride on the bus systems until they get to the south where they suffer savagery by, by white mobs. In Mississippi and Alabama, there are white efforts to keep blacks from attending college. The police of Bull Connor assists in, a, in violently breaking up peaceful resistance of blacks led by Martin Luther King in Birmingham. JFK takes an aggressive stance on the race issue with new legislation. The March on Washington is like the largest civil rights demonstration, and that is where we get Martin Luther King's famous I Have a Dream speech. In Freedom Summer, people from different backgrounds work together for black voting rights. And in Selma, Alabama, the police have violence against peaceful opposition. So this leads to the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1965, which gives black voting rights. Economic issues include much of the black urban population being in poverty. The majority of blacks are in cities rather than in the south. And... And th this was more of a national issue. From, okay, the civil rights movement went from an attack on de jure, or by law segregation, to an attack on de facto, in practice segregation. So in the South, segregation was the law, so that's de jure.
and in the north it was just how things were, and that's even practice. So we have affirmative action in which businesses recu recruit minorities rather than simply denying them jobs. There's growing violence in cities. The Watts riot in LA was efforts to improve conditions or measures to stop violence and lawlessness. So we have different movements, the most famous of them is known as Black Power. We, um, the blacks have racial pride in, in their heritage rather than just wanting to work together with the whites. They say, I'm black and proud. And there's a schism within the movement, however. There's more radical and violent action with the Black Panther Party, which defends black rights even if it comes down to violence. The Na Nation of Islam is a black um, national nationalist group that rejects dependence on whites. And Malcolm X becomes one of the most famous civil rights spokesmen. And he said that blacks had the right to defend themselves from any type of violence or any anything really. The flexible response and the Cold War. JFK wanted a flexible response to the communist threat rather than just relying on atomic weapons. He wanted to expand the U.S. influence peacefully as well, so he instituted the Peace Corps, which sends young Americans to work in developing countries. There is an attempt to assault the Castro government in Cuba at the Bay of Pigs. However, this mission collapses when Castro's forces crush the American invaders. JFK meets with Soviet Union Khrushchev, who builds a wall to keep people from go people in East Berlin from going to West Berlin. So, when the Soviet Union puts nuclear weapons in Cuba, the U.S. establishes a blockade and prepares for an air attack. However, Khrushchev removes them and only if the U.S. will promise not to attack Cuba. Oh. LBJ or Lyndon B. Johnson tries to prove himself as a leader by intervening in the Dominican Republic because of the feared communist threat. And then we have the agony of Vietnam. So Vietnam was under French rule, then the Japanese, and now it is between the French and the nationalist group, the Viet Minh, which was controlled by Ho Chi Minh in 1945. The French say they need Vietnam for their economy, However, and the U.S. doesn't stop them from regaining control. The first Indochina War is the French campaign against Viet Minh, and the Viet Minh siege gets rid of the French. The Geneva Conference splits Vietnam. The North is for the Viet Minh, and the South is for pro-Western forces. The North is traditional and overpopulated and suffers famine, while the South is similar to the, the West of the United States. It's prosperous and it's recently settled. So the North is for unification, while the South is more difficult to unite because of the different groups. The South government is under Go Dinh Diem, who refuses to allow elections as planned by the Geneva Conference. And Diem tries to eliminate supporters of the North, and the North creates the National Liberation Front to reunite the country. So Diem launches an attack against Buddhists, and the U.S. so the U.S. helps him be overthrown. However, the next government is no more stable than he is. Johnson expands the Vietnam commitment and proves himself by continuing JFK's policies. Within the Gulf of Tonkin. The American destroyers are attacked by the North Vietnamese, which leads to the Tonkin Resolution, which allows Johnson and any president to their legal authorization of the conflict. And so now we have an active combat role. So essentially gave them the president say, you can do anything that's necessary to keep Southeast Asia under control and away from communist rule.
So there was an intensifying air war, mounting casualties, however, very little gains. The Viet Cong, the enemy forces, have control of much of the South. With the attrition strategy, the U.S. destroys all important North sites. However, the effects are not what the U.S. expected. The enemy has underground tunnels, and the Ho Chi Minh Trail leads to infiltration in the South. The North Northern resolve and hatred is strengthened. So we have pacification, which pushes out Viet Cong forces and which has the goal of pushing out the Hong Kong forces and winning over the people, as well as relocation, uprooting people from their homes and sending them elsewhere. However, the war dragged on, and victory was elusive. Some people suggested expanding the war, while Johnson focuses on problems at home. With growing opposition to the war, senators like Robert Kennedy voiced their criticisms. And there's growing inflation because of the war, and Johnson institutes a tax increase, which leads to a decrease in funding for great society programs. The Traumas of 1968 The Tet Offensive leads to television footage of the carnage in Vietnam, and it undermines supporting the U.S. for the war. The U.S. inflicts huge Viet Cong casualties. It is a military victory, but a political defeat for the administration because nobody likes the war anymore. The Democrats rally behind the anti-war candidate, and Johnson announces his withdrawal from the campaign. Vice President Hubert Humphrey soon appears to be the front runner in the president race. Martin Luther King Jr. is assassinated, causing grief and anger among blacks and violent riots. Then, Robert Kennedy is assassinated, and he emerged as a figure of popular appeal soon before his death. He and uh, JFK helped contribute to the Kennedy legacy, which was the commitment to using government to help the powerless. In the 1968 Democratic Convention, there's debating the anti-war part of the platform and nominating of Humphrey. However, the most important part is that Demonstrators and police clash in a bloody riot, and the, all this violence is televised. Although Humphrey receives the nomination, this is seemingly worth, worthless because of no one wants to say they voted for the crazy Democrats because of what happened at the convention. Richard Nixon captures the Republican nomination with promises of stability, law and order, government retrenchment, and peace with honor in Vietnam and Nixon wins a narrow victory in 1968 election. Then we move into the 70s.